The high-end phones from LG, HTC, and Samsung really get a positive rap, but one that's forgotten about from time to time, at least in the US, Sony. Their new flagship device, the Sony Xperia Z1, is in the office and I'm doing a full review. HTC, Samsung, and LG, at least in the Android field, get quite a rap, a positive rap for the most part, in the US market because they're the dominant Android providers, at least in the US space. But Sony has some incredible Android smartphones and that trend continues with the Sony Xperia Z1, the newest iteration, and Sony's Z line and the newest high-end flagship from the OEM. This thing is packed to the gills with specifications. Everything looks great on this phone. Two gigabytes of RAM, 16 gigabytes of internal storage with a micro SD card slot. You've got Android 4.2 Jelly Bean over here. You've got a 2.2 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon 800 CPU. You've got a five inch 1080p HD display with 441 pixels and 1080 by 1920 pixels. Or I should say 441 pixels per inch. 1080 by 1920 pixels. There we go. I knew something sounded wrong about that, but you can see it does have a little bit of bezel to it, and that was a point that people made in the unboxing video, but for the most part, this is an incredibly high-end smartphone with 8.5 millimeters of thinness, thin goodness on this device. Very thin device despite being water-resistant, dust-resistant, and packing a 3,000 milliamp hour non-removable battery underneath this back surface. I mean, you're packing a huge battery in this device, nice large five inch display, water resistance, dust resistance, and at least, hey, on T-Mobile even, LTE capabilities, all in this tiny package is 8.5 millimeters thin. That's good all around as far as I'm concerned. But before we get too far into the X1 review video, I wanna thank our partners at Best Buy Mobile because they give us phones like this for use in our One Paul Bandit giveaway game. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, you'll walk out working. They'll make sure you set up your email, your contacts, your web. So when you walk out the door, you're good to go and you're set up and you don't have to waste the time doing all that thanks to Best Buy Mobile. So let's jump right in, X1 full review. And this is one of the other devices coming out of the market, one of the newer ones to pack, the Snapdragon 800 CPU. And you can see Sony's user interface, formerly called Timescape, over on this device. And there have been some pretty substantial changes to the overall look and feel of Sony's user interface here. And you can see them all throughout the actual system. So I'll just dive in, talk a little bit about some of the customizations that I enjoy and appreciate. And we'll pick up in part two, talking more about that. We'll do some speed tests, some camera settings tests, and more because this thing's packing a 20.7 megapixel camera with 1080p HD recording, and it's worth taking a look at. But before we go into software, I wanna show you the hardware of the device itself. It very much resembles the Xperia Z over here. You got your power button, your volume rocker on the right side, camera shortcut button down here at the bottom. Over here, your micro SIM card slot with a flap protecting it. And then over here, you've got your micro SD card slot, your micro USB charging port, an area for a dock. And I should have pointed out back here just a second ago, a lanyard hole as well. Down here at the bottom, speakers, and then up top, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And that is that. So still a very solid, beautiful looking device, but overall design language is very similar to the Sony Xperia Z and even the Z Ultra, despite having a massive 6.44 inch display. Out of the box, you get the typical Sony stuff here. You can see a lot or album rather. You can see all these little games that came with this particular version. And I want to stop for a second and thank GSM Nation for letting us have this device to review. Special thanks to them. You can pick this phone up right here at the link. Take a look at that and you can buy it from GSM Nation and get it shipped pretty quickly to you if you want this device. I should point out, it works on LTE on T-Mobile, does not work on LTE on AT&T, so keep that in mind if you're looking to buy that. So over here, Little Big City, a bunch of different little games and things that came with this particular version that's unlocked, but you got movies, you got, what else? Sony Select, Social Life, Track ID, Update Center, Walkman, Xperia Lounge, Xperia Privilege, and more. So a couple of different options there, and of course, Sony's award-winning ecosystem, Walkman, album, movies, and Sony Select all pre-installed on this device itself. Now, Timescape within itself runs really quickly on this device, and I just called it Timescape, and it's not called Timescape anymore, but old habits die hard. Is that right? I think that's right. Settings here, wireless and networks, device, you've got personal, accounts, system, and more, so you can see all your settings here, and a lot of different customization options, and even Sony in the recent years, they've done a very good job integrating their ecosystem into the user interface. So Xperia Connectivity, for example, you can see here, throw settings, I can play content on my device on other devices. So for example, I can take content from the Xperia Z1 and put it on something else. Screen mirroring here, I can mirror it on the TV as it sounds like. DualShock wireless controllers, we saw that stuff. I believe it's CES, if I recall. Start mirror link, USB connectivity, and of course media server settings. But then you get a nice little wealth of personalization on the design or on the device, I should say, as well, with theme, wallpaper, 
lock screen and quick settings. Quick settings is one of my favorites because oftentimes when I look at these quick settings, I think I don't really use Wi-Fi that often. I actually hate using Wi-Fi on my phone. I much prefer carrier data as opposed to Wi-Fi. I like to keep it on that. don't like switching back and forth. So I don't use Wi-Fi a whole lot. So I kicked it down here to the very bottom. I use airplane mode all the time because very rarely am I not in an airplane traveling somewhere for work. So I kicked that one on and I can move it up and down. So I can move it into the first slot. For example, when I go back, you'll see that airplane has moved over to this side of the quick toggles now in the notifications bar area. You can do wallpaper lock screen stuff as well. I can change my wallpapers here and we can select, you know, just for example, let's do this one. Set that wallpaper. I can select my home wallpaper. I can change my theme as well, which gives me the color options, different color theme options. And that's a nice little feature that I've appreciated on this unit. Green happens to be my favorite color. So I have it selected as earth, but you can come down here and go through and select, you know, heat, silk, sunny, Xperia, air, and more. You'll notice on-screen buttons here as well, back home and recent applications. And this is another really cool thing that I like on the Xperia devices, the more recent Xperia devices. You've got quick applications here that I can launch. And for example, I can come in here and do a notepad, drag it down, I can remove it from the favorites if I want to, or I can just click it and it'll start right up on my desktop. So these are multitasking based applications. I can move this around the screen as much as I want to. And it isn't quite as organized as let's say the Galaxy S4, the Galaxy Note 3, Galaxy Note 2, etc. because I like the way that those individually take up the whole screen and you can either move the uh, move the wall rather up and down depending on how much you want to allocate to that particular app. So for example, on the Note 2 or the Note 3, if you have notepad and browser open, you can say, well, I don't really need more than two lines of the notepad. I really want most of it to be browser. It's not as organized here. It's kind of harder to line these up, for example, up top and you know get them just as you want them to be and then come down here and select another quick app, for example, like browser and try to line them up you know, perfectly where they're like perfectly not on top of each other. You can see they kind of do sit on top of each other, but still a great multitasking option here and it does compete with other units on the market. So I've got the browser here as well. I'll go ahead and type in phonedog.com and take a look at T-Mobile's LTE, which historically doesn't do very well in my office, but you can see phone dog loading up right here. And I can move that back and forth, move it around as I see fit, get rid of notepad if I want to, and use this while I'm running in the background, run through the applications as you see here. So still multitasking on this device, not necessarily the same though, as we've seen on the Galaxy devices and some of the other units, some of LG's options as well. So phonedog.com loaded here. And speaking of, let's take a look at the Sony Xperia keyboard here. It has been modified and changed. Overall, I find it to be pretty easy to type on. I do have some challenges from time to time. For example, we'll actually jump into messaging here and take a look. But you know, portrait to landscape is fast. Everything's zippy on this device. You got little to no lag. And I could say, Brown Fox is happy that it is Monday. Quick Brown Fox is happy that it is Monday. This thing vibrates quite a bit, so you may want to turn the vibration off if you type on a regular basis and that bugs you. It sounds like a, like a motorbike almost starting up. But other than that, pretty pleased with autocorrect and things of that nature. And you've got a nice numeric keypad and commonly used symbols over on this side. Stay tuned for part two. We'll talk more about network connectivity camera and we'll do some quadrant standard and speed tests as well to see how this thing performs in addition to other features and other settings highlighted in part two. Stay tuned part two of the Xperia Z1 video review.